Hello, welcome to Graphite and the first introductory tutorial. Graphite is completely free, open source creative software for making 2D artwork and graphic designs. I will show you how it works throughout this series. The first video is a quick start where we jump straight in and build a small project in just a few minutes. The next video will cover the editor more rigorously. So without further ado, let's open it up. If you visit the website, graphite.rs, you can simply click on the launch button here and that'll open the editor for you. We're going to start out by creating this artwork during this project. It's a happy little sun, and it gives us an experience with a bunch of the different tools. Opening up the editor, create a new document. And we don't really need the default of 1920 by 1080, but instead we can go with 1000 by 1000 because our artwork is going to be roughly square. We can also call this happy sun. We are now viewing the viewport, and we can pan around by either holding down the middle mouse button, that's clicking the scroll wheel down into your mouse and dragging around, or holding down the space bar and then left clicking as you drag around. These are both ways to change the view. And finally, you can also use the scroll bars horizontally and vertically. If you ever need to reset your view, you can always click on the view, zoom to fit all. This will bring you right back to the center. You can also zoom in with the magnifying glass buttons or zoom out. So with that said, let's begin by creating a circle that we can use for our sun. If we click from the center and drag, you'll see we are building an ellipse. And if you hold down the shift key, that'll lock it to being a circle instead of an oval. And if you hold down the alt key, that'll lock it to making its scaling based upon the center of where you began your dragging. And let's make it maybe this size. We can always go back and compare what we're actually working on here. Maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller. And you can always just place it nicely in the center. Now, what we can do is we can choose a color for the fill. So we want to fill it with a nice little yellow here. So we can pick a color from the hue. This is allowing us to pick any color of the rainbow. And once we pick this, there is a second step you always have to remember. Right now we're on white, and white is the same regardless of what hue we pick. But once we pick a nice little orangish yellow, we can now move it over to something such as this. Now we can pick a nice color for our stroke. The stroke is the outline. We can go here, pick a color, and we want kind of a, a little bit of a grayish blue, just like maybe that. And now we want a stroke weight of something much more than five. So this is the thickness in five pixels, but we probably want to go up to more like 20. We can also just type the value of 20 there. So that looks good. We can always maybe scale down our shape a little bit. So we can begin by giving it a face. We'll start out with a mouth. And to do that, we can make a shape with the pen tool. So switch to the pen tool. The, the hotkey is P. Now click, click again, and then again to make a V shape. Then you can hit the escape key on your keyboard. And now simply switch to the path tool, which is the tool right above the pen tool, and then double click on that bottom point. This has given us the ability to switch from a sharp point to a smooth point. And it's widened the point so it has two handles. This is a handle and this is a handle. They're represented with these circles. If we select both of them, we can now hit the S key, S to scale, and then drag our mouse left and right or further and closer away from the center of the handles. And this is essentially changing the shape and we wanna make a little smile. So let's go to here and then I can left click to apply it. That confirms the positioning of those shapes that we wanted. And now if we switch back to the select tool because we're done with modifying that path, we can go ahead and give it a color. So we'd like our color to be the same for this outline as well as for the mouth. And to do that, we can pick a stroke color. And we can also pick a stroke weight. So let's start with 20, which is the same value here. And we'd also like to give it a rounded line cap. So let's go ahead and pick a, uh, pick a color that's the same as this one. So we can actually just go ahead and click on this other one, the outline for this, and copy the code. This hex code here is 2E3136. That is the value that we are using for this. So let's go ahead and copy it and paste it here. So now we have that same color. We can drag it up into here and it looks like we have some teeth by accident. That's because we have a fill color, which is white, but we don't want white. We would actually rather have no fill color. So let's go ahead and just remove it there. And now we can use the, again, the select tool, which gives us this transform cage, which allows us to drag these pieces. And you can also use S again to scale and then move your mouse in and out. And then you can also hit X and that'll make it so you only scale along the X axis or also hit Y 
and that means we only scale along the y-axis. And finally, we can also hit something like 0.5, and that means that we scale to half the original height. But let's just sort of pick a nice looking shape. In addition to dragging the shape around, I can also hit G for grab, and that will grab the shape and move it around. And just like with S for scale, we can hit X to constrain it to the X axis, and Y to constrain it to the Y axis, which allows us to be pretty precise with our movements. Let's place our mouth here and move on to the eyes. We can go to the eyedropper tool. This allows us to pick a color. So we want to pick the color that's used on this outline. And you'll notice that this changes this circle here when you click. So if I click here, it becomes white. If I click here on the background, it becomes dark. If I click here, it becomes yellow. And if I click here, it becomes the color we want. So that's called the primary working color. The one beneath it is called the secondary working color. And we are going to use, at the moment, the primary working color. So now we can go back to the ellipse tool and we don't want the stroke. So click on the X to remove the stroke. For fill, we want to use the primary working color. Now it's gonna be this one because that is what this primary working color is at the moment. And of course, if I change it to something like orange, it becomes this. At any moment, you can always update the primary working color or you can switch it over to being a custom value. That's this one. And that allows you to enter anything you want and it does not have any relationship to the working color that's shown here. So let's go back to the one we want, which is gonna be the primary. We can use the eyedropper tool to select the color we want. And now we can go ahead and draw our eye. Draw a circle. Again, we can hold shift to constrain it to being a circular and hold alt to go from the center of where we began our drag. And that looks like a nice eye. Since we want the eyes to have the same size, let's go ahead and duplicate the other one instead of drawing the second one twice. Maybe move them all down like this. And now let's give him some little pupils here. We can go ahead and just make a new ellipse. But this time we want it to be white. So we can actually just click this button here to swap the primary and secondary working colors. And now because our secondary working color was white, and now that we swapped them, the primary working color is white, that is the color of our fill. So we'll go ahead and make a little eye. It's actually nice if it's off center a little bit. We can always zoom in. You can do that by holding down the control key while you use the scroll wheel. Or again, you can use these buttons here to zoom in and out. And as long as we're with the select tool, we can drag the entire shape wherever we want it. And we can duplicate the shape, copy and paste. That's control C, control V, or on a Mac, command C, command V. And we have our glistening little eyes here. These are either reflections or pupils. Uh, so we can move on to now giving it a little bit of a uh, shadow beneath it. So the darker portion should be beneath, indicating there's a little depth to this circle. So let's actually duplicate this layer. Now we can put this at the bottom again and remove the stroke from one and the fill from the other. So we have a uh, stroke and a fill, and let's go ahead and just remove the fill. So we're changing the color to no color. That's this red slash. And for this other one, instead of removing the fill, we're going to remove the stroke. And that's the red slash. Make sure the one with the stroke is on top of the one with the fill, as you can see in the layer panel, because otherwise they will end up looking like that, which is not what you want. Uh, this looks good. But we want to duplicate, again, copy and paste, Command-C, Command-V if you're on a Mac, or Control-C, Control-V on, on Windows or Linux. And we can change the color of this, uh, of this one. So let's change the color of the one beneath it to be a little darker. We can't see that at the moment because it's underneath. But if we now scale down this one, or rather, we want to scale down the one that's on top. That's the brighter color. And then we align the two by selecting both and then vertically aligning them like this. We now have ourselves a little bit of a darkened area underneath. Let's give it more of a vivid red color. That way it doesn't look so drab. So go a little bit redder. Change the color so it looks nice. And that's good. OK, so we have almost completed the face. But one thing we can do is we can actually duplicate uh, this mouth, turn it upside down, make it a little bit bigger by scaling up, and then move it up here. And we're actually going to make it white. So you can either drag up here, or you can click on this white swatch there to pick the white color. And let's actually turn down the opacity here. Something like this looks good. And then just give them a little bit of a highlight. So that goes with the shadow. We have highlights and shadows. And maybe increase the size of this a bit so we can increase the stroke weight and get it nicely lined up so it mostly fits where we want it to be. 
And then finally, we can drag this to be beneath the outline of the entire face like that. So now it's underneath. So we have our layers. And in fact, let's go ahead and name them real quick. Okay, now that we have our face completed, let's move on to adding the rays of light coming out of the edges of the face to make it look like a sun. So if we go to the node graph, this is a way of viewing the data that feeds into our layers. So if we go to each of our layers, we select them, you see how the selection is matched between both the layer panel as well as the properties panel, you can see all of our nodes. So the highlight, for example, has an opacity node, a stroke node, a fill node, a transform node, and a shape node. It starts with the shape, then it gets transformed, then it gets filled, then it gets stroked, then it gets an opacity applied to it, and then finally it reaches the layer, and these nodes define what the layer is. And in the properties panel, as we were previously working with these node properties, we can see we have, from the bottom, we have the shape, then the transform, then the fill, the stroke, the opacity, and then finally we reach the layer. So that is what the node graph is. It's a representation of all the data that gets added together and becomes layers. It looks a little overwhelming, but this gives you a lot of control over how everything works. And usually you don't have to worry about the node graph. It's always part of the layer panel and the properties panel. And you only have to open it when you're trying to do some fancy things like what we're about to do now. We'd like to have a bunch of lines radiating outwards from the sun. So let's start out with a line. Right-click in the graph and say Line. We've created a line here. We can drag it up here at the top because we'd like our lines to appear above everything else. Select these, maybe move them out of the way a little bit, and we'd actually like a new layer. So we're going to duplicate that layer and just put it here. We can rename it. We can call this Rays. Duplicate a stroke node. Hook this up and then put the stroke node in between. So now the stroke node is connected and we'll do circular repeat. This allows us to repeat it in a circle, which is what we want for the rays of the sun. We have 10 repeats. We have a radius of five, and we have a zero degree angle offset. But let's increase the radius a little bit, and we will see what this starts to look like. But you'll notice that we have no stroke at the moment. We need to change this stroke to be the same as the color that we wanted from one of these others. So let's actually take the same color as this yellow face. We'll copy the stroke value, or the fill value actually. Copy that hex code, that's this here, and paste it here for our hex code. Now we actually do have the rays that are showing up. Close the node graph, and you'll notice right at the origin here, that's the zero, zero point, you'll see our rulers display zero here, and they display zero here. Now let's change the weight also to be 20 give it a round shape like that. And now we can change the radius to move these further apart because this is the radius of the repetition of each of these 10 in a circle. And let's actually reduce this maybe to eight instead. Okay, so we have eight rays radiating out and now we can just simply use the select tool to drag it. And what actually happened behind the scenes is that when we dragged it, it added a new transform node here for us. That's what the tools do, they add nodes as part of the graph for you without you even really having to realize or notice what's going on. So let's line it up nicely. A little trick here is we could scale it down with the S key or, and then now that it's smaller than the other shapes, we can go ahead and select one of the other shapes and then horizontally and vertically align it with these buttons for alignment and then simply scale it back up again. And now we know that they're centered. If we wanna change the length of one of these lines, we can actually change the X and Y starting and ending positions. So let's just maybe reduce one of the positions here. And well, let's say maybe this length would be nice. And actually we do have to center it again. So we'll do that same trick. And then scale it back up again. So this is nice, we have our rays, but we'd actually like to have another set of rays that are smaller just to have a little bit of variety. So what we can do is copy and paste this entire rays here, and we'll call this small rays. And these ones are gonna be even smaller, but we do want to first rotate them a little bit away from each other. So at the moment we can rotate like so, but we'd like to calculate that more precisely. So there's 360 degrees in a circle, and we have eight rays in total that are being done here. And we want to offset by half of the distance between the two. So divide by two, we just typed that math into the input box 
it automatically did the math for us. And now it gave us the value of 22.5. That's very convenient. So now these rays are halfway in between the other rays. We can decrease, let's just say the radius of them a little bit. So they have a little bit of a, start, a difference in their start position. And then we can decrease the size of the rays like this. And we can use our centering trick again, make it, uh, make it smaller. and then scale them back up again and place them where we'd like. I think the final piece of finishing touches is that we can look at what the artboard is. So you may re recall at the beginning, we created our new document and chose a size of 1000 by 1000. And that is the size of this artboard. An artboard is basically a piece of paper or a canvas that sits behind your artwork. And it is by default white, but in this case, it would actually be nice to give it a kind of a sky color. So let's pick something nice and contrasting with the yellow, but also pleasant something that looks a bit like the sky. That looks good. Um, I'm also noticing that these vertical rays and these horizontal rays look a little bit repetitious. They align too nicely. So it'd be nice to actually give a little bit of an offset. So we already gave the small rays an offset of 22.5 degrees, but it'd be nice to maybe do another offset that's halfway in between all of that. For this one, we know it's 22.5 degrees. Let's do 22.5 divided by two. And then for the other one, we will say plus, and then give ourselves some parentheses, 22.5 divided by two. And now we have 33.75 because it did the math for us. Okay, so that looks a lot nicer because it's not so perfectly aligned. It doesn't look like we have the vertical lines and the horizontal lines being too aligned with everything else. The final step now is we can export our artwork. File, export. Then you can choose your choice of export options as they're shown here, and then finally hit export. All right, we've made some nice artwork and let's now move on to the next tutorial.